Fun Facts presents the 1970 AMC AMX. Is this a classic muscle car? I don't know. It was introduced back in 1968 through 1970. Let's read some fun facts and find out. If you're excited, I'm excited. Let's get started now. American Motors 1970 AMX advertised headline, we made the AMX look tougher this year because it's tougher this year. They were mildly facelifted resembling the first two model years, but the changes were different enough to be separate design for the 1970 model. Featured was a new front end designed with a longer hood that had a power blister with two large openings. These were functional cold ram air induction system with the popular GO package, available with the 360 and the 390 engines. The new grill was flush and full width, incorporating the headlamps. The revised rear end also featured full width tail lamps and single center mounted backup light. Side marker lights were now shared with several other AMC models. Riding on the same wheel beast, wheel, 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 wheel base, 97 inches. As before, the changes increased the AMX's overall body length by about two inches. American Motors also changed the AMX's engine lineup for 1970 with the introduction of a new 360 cubic inch 5.9 liter four barrel 290 horsepower P code to replace the 340 cubic inch 5.6 liter V8. The smallest 290 was dropped and the AMC claimed 65 more base horsepower than the AMX previous years. The 390 cubic inch 6.4 liter V8 engine continued but upgraded to new heads with 51 cc's, combustion chambers that increased power to 325 horsepower at 4,800 RPM and 440 foot-pounds of torque at 3,200 RPM. The code remained X. X marks the spot, I guess, for the engine on the vehicle identification number bin. The GO package was available with a 360 cubic inch 5.9 liter engine, including front power disc brakes, F70 times 14 raised white letter tires, handling package, heavy duty cooling, and the Ram air induction system for an additional $298.85, or including the 390 engine for just an additional $383.90. Those were the days, my friend. Also new, the front doubler wishbone suspension had ball joints, upper and lower control arms, coil springs and shock absorbers above the upper control arms, as well as trailing struts on the lower control arms. The Magnum 500 road wheels were now standard but the new machine 15 by 7 inch slot styled wheels became a mid-year option. The interiors of the AMX were also redesigned. The broad wood grain dashboard center console and two spoke rim blow steering wheel were new. Tall bucket seats now featured a clamshell design. Integrating the headrest, leather, and upholstery was only an extra $34. And everybody had an extra $34 bucks for that. I know that was an easy sale. The exterior rear view mirror featured a new design and in some cases matched the new car body's color. The three big bad exterior paints continue to be optional on the 1970 AMXs, but they now came with regular chrome bumpers, a new shadow mask, exterior finish applied over any available AMX color was a $52 option. 
which included a satin black painted hood, engine compartment, front fender tops, and side window surrounds offset by thin silver striping. The additional C-stripe was again only $32. The manufacturer's suggested retail price, the MSRP, for the base model was $3,000. $395 and AMC promoted the 1970 AMX as a sports car for the price of a sporty car. Well, looks like they're calling this a muscle car. The AMC AMX is a two-seat GT style muscle car. Produced by American Motors Corporation from 1968 through 1970 as one of just two American-built two-seaters. The AMX was in direct competition with the one-inch longer wheelbase Chevrolet, are you ready? Corvette for substantially less money. <coughs> Fitted with the standard high compression 290 cubic inch 4.8 liter or optional 390 cubic inch 6.4 liter AMC V8 engine, the AMC AMX offered top notch performance at an affordable price. In spite of this value, an enthusiastic initial reception by automotive media enthusiasts Sales never thrive. <clears throat> Don't know why. However, the automaker's larger objectives to refocus AMC's image on performance and to bring younger customers into its dealer showrooms were achieved. After three model years, the two-seat version was discontinued. I don't hear any clapping. Hmm. The AMX's signature badging was transferred to a high-performance version of its four-seat sibling, the Javelin. From the 1971 to 1970 model years, American Motors capitalized the respected reputation of the two-seat AMX's by reviving the model designation for performance-equipped coupe versions of the Compact Hornet in 1977, the Concord in 1978, and the Subcompact Spirit in 79 and 1980. The AMX name originates from the American Motors Experimental, and I think it was. It's the code used on a concept vehicle and it two prototypes shown on the company's Project 4 Automobile Show Tour in 1966 was a fiberglass two-seat AMX and the other was a four-seat AMX 2. Both of these radically styled offerings reflected the company's strategy to shed its economy car image and appeal to a more youthful performance-oriented market. Good luck. The original AMX full-scale models were developed in 1965 by AMC's Advanced Styling Studios under the direction of Charles Mashing. The two-seat AMX was a big hit on the auto show circuit in 1966, and it featured a rumble seat that opened out from the car deck lid for extra passengers called a Ramble C. AMC executives saw the opportunity to change consumers' perceptions of the automaker from Romney's economy car image to the realities of a new marketplace interested in sporty performance oriented vehicles. Robert B. Evans requested a car like the AMX to be put into production quickly. Two simultaneous development programs emerged from the production car. One for a modified Javelin and another for a complete
completely new car body in fiberglass. The first approach was selected allowing AMC to use its ex existing technology and unibody manufacturing expertise to make fairly inexpensive modifications to the Javelin approximating the prototype styling and proportions. The automaker could turn out steel bodies in large numbers, so it rejected developing plastic or fiberglass bodies because those are intended only for low production models. The first fully operational unit debuted as part of AMC's AMX project in 1966, the once frumpy automaker jumped on the pony car bandwagon with its attractive javelin. Well, if you found yourself this far into the video, good for you. I thought I might have lost you about six minutes ago, but we'd like to thank you for taking the time for watching our video. And if you like our video, please give us a thumbs up. It really does help our channel. And if you like our channel, we're doing all the muscle cars. There are a hundred of them, believe it or not. Names that you're just gonna go, you gotta be kidding. I mean, no, you're really going to love. So we're gonna be doing all of the sports cars. We're gonna be doing all of the hybrid cars and the super cars, the autoramas, the hot rods, the custom cars. There's a little bit of everything for everybody. Thank you, and we wish you a great day.